Today I'm back on the MPC and I wanted to share some tips for software version 3. I've got about eight tips here. They're pretty quick. I'll leave markers so you can skip to them and revisit them if you want to get them into your muscle memory. And yeah, let's start with a nice simple one. First of all, if we go to the arrangement mode on any track, we can see here the values that we've already put in. But you can actually double click this and get straight into the grid area. It gives you really quick access to the grid area. And that's very useful for doing little edits that we want to do, more intricate edits. And if we go back to main, you can obviously do this for any track that you want. So we'll change the track, say to a kick. We'll look at the arrangement tab. We can see our kicks that we've programmed in here. We'll double click and there we go. We're back in grid again and we can play around with position and things like that. All the good stuff that we get with grid. So that's the first little tip, just very easy to access the grid from the main screen just by double clicking on the arrangement window there. Tip number two, you can obviously change tracks by highlighting the track and using the wheel here so we can scroll through all the different tracks. But if we're on arrangement, that means that we then have to go to the track or whatever. We have to re-highlight it before we can use the wheel. There's actually an easier way to do this. All you have to do is press and hold menu and then we can just swap between the tracks using the pads on the left hand side here. You can see what's quite cool is they're actually color coordinated with what's on the screen and what's behind the pad. Makes it really, really easy to see which track you're changing to. So for example, if I want to go to the samples, that's four. You can see now I'm on a samples track, hi-hat. There we go, we're on hi-hats. Really nice and easy. You just press and hold main and you can select a different track. I really like that for choosing different tracks. There is a little bit of a delay while you're pressing main, but then it gives you access to them all and it's really, really simple. So yeah, really like that little shortcut. Definitely good for speeding up the workflow. Okay, another thing that I wanna show you guys is that if you go to menu and you go to preferences, we're gonna go down to project load and save. And you can see here, we can change the default project behavior. So I've got mine set to empty project. That means it's always ready when I turn it on to make a brand new beat. You can go ahead and choose a factory project instead, or you could do user auto low project as well. So you've got three options in there. You can change between those to find the one that best suits your workflow. I like having it ready to make a new beat straight away. So I've chosen empty project and that's gonna be what's saved. So yeah, you just go into preferences. You might have to scroll down a bit if you can't see that option. And you can see it's project load and save in the sidebar there. Another option while we're inside the preferences area is project defaults and default synth. So we can scroll down in project defaults and you can see here that we can select the default plugin synth that's loaded up. Now I've chosen none here because I think that's gonna be good for speeding up the boot time of the device because it doesn't have to load a plugin. But if you're not too bothered about that, you can go ahead and choose whatever you want. So for example, you can see here MPC plugins, maybe I'll choose baseline. That's gonna be your default synth every time you load one of those up. I'm gonna go back in and just make sure that's set to none again. I prefer that there's nothing in there so that it doesn't affect load time at all when I'm booting up the machine. Another really cool tip about software version three is that there's this little hidden menu that you may not have seen. If you look really carefully at the top of the screen, there's a little tiny tab, which is really difficult to see. And what it means is that you can scroll down from the top of the window like that, and you get access to all these options. So we get time correct, we can turn that off and on here. Really easy, you just press it because of the touch screen. We've got loop on and off, automation read. We can toggle the metronome. We can use the tuner. So there's loads of little useful options hidden away there and they're really easy to get to. And if you don't want this anymore, you can just scroll it back up and it hides itself away. But yeah, it's not very easy to see that, is it? But it is there. If you can't see it, just try scrolling down from the top of the screen and you should get that menu and you can slide and get rid of it as well. One thing they've brought over from the last software, which I really like, but you might not know about, is the ability to press and hold menu and select any of these 16 items using the pads on the left-hand side here. So let's say, for example, we wanna to go to list edit, that's the bottom left. So we know that's the bottom left pad. I'm still holding menu, I'll press that, and you can see we get to the list mode. Go back to main, let's try another one. We'll hold menu and let's say we wanna to get to next sequence. We can see that's this pad here. We'll press that and there we go we're straight into that so i think that's really good for workflow once you get things sorted out in this area you know that these pads link to them and you can get to them really really quickly by just pressing the corresponding pad and holding menu i really really like that i think it really helps to speed up workflow on the topic of that did you know that you can actually customize all of these menus so you can see the options down the left here on the main screen you can change all the order of those if you want to by pressing and holding 
pulling it down you can see that those have now changed order but it doesn't stop there you can do that inside this area as well so there we see i've just switched those two over and what's even better is you can pull these things across into this menu so that they're available on your main window so for example let's say i want to get rid of channel mixer and bring in net sequence i press and hold that drag it across and i drop it on there and there we go it's in that menu and when we go back to main you can see that it's now in the side as well that's really cool for customizing your workflow and it's going to help you to have an even slicker flow when you're making beats i think it's really cool that you can customize those i'll definitely be sorting this out after this video is finished one last thing that i wanted to show you guys in list mode which is really cool is that you can change probability so if we double click on snare for example we get to the grid area like i showed you earlier but if we go across to list you can see that all the snares in this particular loop are actually listed here well in a list so it makes it very very easy to see exactly what's going on and you can go ahead on the right hand side and alter the probability of that particular hit actually sounding so we can use the wheel here you see you can turn it right down then there's less chance of that sound hitting every time the loop goes round with them all being on 100% that means that every single one is going to hit every single time but you can get really creative and create some randomness by changing probability percentages and another great thing as well is you can change the velocity here as well. So we just have to click a velocity and we can use the wheel again. So if you like having some more dynamics in your loops, you can go ahead and do it manually here. And I really, really like the control that that gives you. I think that's particularly useful for hi-hats. So if I go to main and use the shortcut to go to hi-hats, double click here, then we'll go to list. And you can see here that my hi-hats all have different velocities. That's because I programmed them in using 16 levels, but you could go in and just slightly tweak them if you wanted to. You can see here, I can just change that value and get them really dialed into exactly how you want them. I really like that list area. That's one of my favorite new features of software 3.5. And I like being able to edit all that stuff in there. So there we go, guys. That's it for this one. I hope those tips helped. It's kind of a whistle stop tour of software version three, and I think they're really going to help your workflow. If you have any good tips of your own, please leave them in the comments below, share them with the community. And yeah, I'll be back with another video very, very soon.